Well, we've done some bioengineering on the stream bank here on Swift Creek uh, to stabilize a severely eroded and degraded cut bank that was, you know, unstable and contributing a lot of material. I see some falling down behind me right now uh, to the to the creek. So, uh, fine, a lot of fines in terms of silt and sand, and a lot of larger gravel and cobble. Uh, what we've undertaken here is uh, about 87 meters of stream bank work where we've installed uh, uh, rock and wood structures as well as thousands of uh, willow cuttings and several layers of fabric to add enough structure to the stream bank that it's much less likely to continue to erode in the future. The benefit of that is that, well, it benefits fish and fish habitat directly by improving water quality for fish and providing them with uh, microhabitats such as resting pools for returning spawners or young juveniles that need to get out of high current areas so that they can rest. These fish can now rest in the little pools that will be formed underneath some of these rocks or around these logs. The juveniles can rest in behind logs and rocks in places where the, it takes very little energy to stay in one place because there's no hydraulic force occurring there in the little back eddies. And, um, the other benefits are that it improves water quality in the stream in terms of uh, the city of Elmont water users which draw the water from a point of diversion that's located just downstream from this site and um, uh, benefits uh, the landowner in terms of uh, preventing valuable land from eroding as well. Basically I got involved in this project just by my base knowledge of the salmon, what the salmon need. Uh, when, the, when the stream washed out in 2011, I knew it had destroyed so much habitat that those fish need. Uh, that's when I went to fisheries. We asked for someone to come up and look. They hired Mike to come and do a prescription for this river. It's so exciting to see this because I can see exactly that this work in front of us is going to make us very good gravel beds out there that our Chinooks are going to be using. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year. But they will be up here looking at this once it's, it takes a couple of years to develop and I'm so excited about the whole project happening. So Mike, what kind of challenges have you faced with this project? Oh, I'd say it's quite, the, the biggest challenge was definitely getting the funding, it always is. The techniques that we're using, uh, I'm very familiar with, we've done hundreds and hundreds of these types of treatments. The actual prescription for each site changes a little bit according to the, uh, the conditions on the site. But the basic building blocks are the same and uh, we're very familiar with how to build these. The biggest problem is finding the funding and uh, we were able to get some funding through uh, Recreational Fisheries Conservation Program as well as from other contributors such as uh, uh, FRISP, uh, Kinder Morgan, Columbia Basin Trust, um, who else funded us? Village of Valmont has helped out. Village of Valmont. We've had a Adventure lot of help. management. <laughs> Adventure management put a lot of time and and some funding into the uh, kitty. I've contributed quite a bit of time unpaid as well, and uh, we had a lot of help from some local contractors that gave us uh, really good assistance in delivering rock and providing wood and repairing equipment and whatnot for us. So it ends up being a community project in the end and. Uh, I'd say the biggest problem with it was not technical, it was getting the funding. And the other issues that could have come up that then would have been, you know, the wrong timing of the year. We're able to get in here early spring and get everything installed before everything thaws, before the mud and rain comes, while we have winter dormant cuttings to plant and water levels are really low. So that part of it worked out really well. It, it could have been a problem, but it wasn't. One of our, our partners on this is the Simp First Nation. Um, traditionally, this has been part of their territory. They've been involved with this pretty much from the start with me. Um, they've been assisting us with an educational component that's going on in the school. And uh, they bring the school kids here, they bring salmon here. Um, they've done a really good um, educational section for to get younger people involved in, in the importance of these salmon to our community and to their community. Um, they, as I say, they will be back in a week or two to do more educational things, so we're fairly excited about seeing what they're going to do, and cultural things, so. Yeah, we're down on the lower bench now of the site, and uh, you can see down the length of the site, we've installed rock and wood structures. Which are, in, which are each individually slowly but surely uh, causing the river uh, to, to roll to the right away from the left bank. So each one of these structures acts 
as an individual structure, but collectively over the length of the site, they add up to a fair amount of uh, resistance to hydraulic force. So the stream actually uh, rolls to the right as it goes over the length of the site. The hard points that are installed here are, are not even intentionally. We've got um, what we call rock spurs sticking out a half a meter or so every eight or nine meters over the length of the site. And we've got wood spurs that are weighted into place with ballast rock that stick out one, two, three, four meters. And every time the water strikes one of those structures, you can actually see it on, see it with your eye if you look. You see where the water strikes one of those structures and rolls to the right of it, rolls away from the creek. So over the length of the site, that takes a lot of the erosive force off this bank now. Uh, so as I mentioned, there's layers of rock and wood with fabric in between to trap silt. And cuttings incorporated in two or three layers up to the top of the uh, berm that we've built. With these wood and rock hard points built into the length of the site to roll the water away from the left bank and cocoa matting on top to trap fines during sort of the, the spring freshet and rainy season so that fines don't get washed into the river as well as uh, brush laid on top which is a natural form of brush matting that traps fines as well as the fabric does and in addition we've grass seeded the site so that when spring comes not only will the cuttings go to bud and start to grow but also the grass will grow and that all adds up to to uh, trapping fines, trapping silt, stopping erosion, and preventing silt from getting into the water. So it improves water quality for fish and human use. And behind me, the uh, high cut bank you can see will continue to erode and collapse, but now it has a place to collapse onto. This, this lower bench, which is four or five meters wide, is actually a place to store sediments now as they fall from the bank above, uh, where they won't fall into the creek anymore. So overall, we've got a good site constructed and over the next two or three years, we'll come back repeatedly and look to see how it's performing. And I think it's going to perform well, but if there was some issue with it, we'd just come back and uh, repair it. Great. What do you think, Bruce? What's the next phase in this project? There's still the next phase in this project, man. Uh, there's still a lot of river that we can repair. Um, as I say, my goal is, is more habitat. Um, as much as this is stream structure and, and protection of banks, that fish habitat and we do have a lot more sites downstream that we can improve. Um, we do have to go after more funding for that. It is going to be a two or three year project. Mike's going to be here more than he wants to be probably but um, he's the guy that has the engineering skills and the, knows how this is going to work. So it's, it's um, my next steps are to raise more funds for to do more areas downstream. Okay.